in Python. By the end of this video, you will not only be one step closer to becoming a Pokemon master, but you will learn the fundamentals of data mining. Today, we are going to data mine the Pokemon Pokedex to create a machine learning model to predict legendary, legendary status. Let's take a look at this data set. This is a CSV file I downloaded and imported using pandas. So of course we have to import pandas as pd. df is equal to pd.read underscore csv of pokemon.csv and df, that is our data frame. Each row is a single Pokemon. Each Pokemon or row is called an instance in this data frame. You'll notice each instance has 12 columns and one outcome variable, which of course is the last column called legendary. So for example, Bulbasaur is an instance in our data set and grass is Bulbasaur's type one feature. By the way, I'm aware that some Pokemon were removed in the release of the latest game like my friend Bulbasaur. But we are gonna use all of the Pokemon that have ever been released. And yes, that includes this weird ice cream Pokemon and this little beaver, which I gotta be honest, this beaver Pokemon reminds me of Justin Bieber. But that's probably just because Dwight Schrute on The Office thought that Justin Bieber was actually Justice Bieber, a crime-fighting beaver. Who is Justice Bieber? Justice, sir. To create our predictive model, we need to decide which features or columns are actually useful in predicting the legendary outcome. There are techniques to use to determine which features actually affect the outcome. But in this case, we're just going to use our common sense. Common sense. For example, a Pokemon's name is unique. That's probably not going to tell us whether or not they are legendary. But attack power and other statistics might be more interesting because legendaries are known to be quite powerful, meaning that their stats are really good. So the total attack power, defense power, special attack speed, all of those might be indicators that we do have a legendary. But when it comes to types, the Pokemon the number, the generation they come from, I think there's clear arguments for why those wouldn't be good indicators if a Pokemon is legendary. Based on this knowledge, we're gonna split our data into an X and a Y. Just like in elementary functions, you plug in X, you get out Y. So in our case, our model will be plug in the features we want and we get out legendary or not, which is Y. X will be the features used in the prediction and Y will be the outcome we want to predict. So in our code, we'll do x is equal to df.drop, columns is equal to, we'll get rid of number, name, type one, type two, legendary, of course, because that's our outcome, and generation. And for y, that's our outcome that we want to predict, so we'll just keep it as the legendary column. To create our model, we're going to train it on our data. In other words, our machine is going to learn the data in an intelligent way. I'm learning. And one technique to evaluate the effectiveness of our machine learning algorithm is to use a test train split. This is where we preserve a portion of our data for testing purposes. For example, let's say our test train split split on generation one or the Kanto region. That means our model will be trained on all Pokemon that are not in generation one. Then once the machine has learned, we would give it generation one Pokemon to see how well it actually does. So let's say once our model is trained, we give our machine model the Pokemon Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur if you don't know, is from Generation 1 or the Kanto region. That means our machine has never seen it before because it was trained using all other generations. The model will predict if Bulbasaur is legendary or not. But we already know the answer. We know that Bulbasaur is not legendary, so we can compare what the model gives us to what the actual answer 
is. This can help us give an idea of the model's accuracy. Can you see why this is a good way to evaluate a machine learning model? But in reality, our test train split isn't going to be on generation one. It's actually going to be random. And usually these test train splits are about a 60 to 40 percent train to test or 70 to 30 percent split. This is really easy to implement with scikit-learn and Python. We do from sklearn.model selection import test train split and we'll have an x train, an x test, a y train, a y test is equal to train test split of our x values and our y value. Now that our test train split is ready, we are prepared to train our model. There are many machine learning models that exist that we could plug our data into. And I'm not gonna explain how any particular model works for the sake of this video. But for now, in this video, we're gonna use what's called a random forest. This is essentially a bunch of random trees. A bunch of trees is a forest, get it? Now, because legendaries are rare, meaning they make up about less than 10% of all of our Pokemon. When we create this model, I'm gonna give it the keyword bootstrap equals true. Import random forest classifier as RF, and we create the model. CLF is equal to RF bootstrap equals true. CLF dot fit x underscore train and y underscore train. I'm learning. Now, real quick, I wanna show you what one of these trees actually looks like because I visualized one of them for you. Here's an example of what this code is actually creating. So you see, it's just a decision tree based on the features we gave it. So in this example, at the very top is speed. If the speed is less than or equal to 88.5, it's true. If it's not true, then we go to the false direction. And we basically follow down that tree and at the end, it will determine if our Pokemon is legendary or not. And if you want me to make a video on how you can visualize these random forest trees, let me know in the comments below. But remember, with our test train split, we are prepared to determine the accuracy of our model because we already know if Bulbasaur is legendary or not. We already have the answers to our testing outcome. So to assess this testing data, we just type clf.score of x test and y test, and it will give us out a score of how often it was able to correctly predict if a Pokemon is legendary or not. And you see here, we get 0.965. That's pretty good. Good. That means 96.5% of the time it was able to correctly classify the legendary status of a Pokemon based on those statistics we gave it. We can evaluate this even further with a confusion matrix. The confusion matrix will give us a few values. One, the true positive value. That is the number of those that are legendary that were correctly identified as legendary. It will also give us the false positive value, meaning the model said they were legendary, but in reality, they're not legendary. The true negative, those that were correctly identified to be not legendary. And lastly, the false negative, those incorrectly identified as not legendary, when in reality, they are. With these numbers, we can get the sensitivity and specificity. Spec 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 specificity, which are common metrics used in analyzing a binary classification prediction model. In a nutshell, sensitivity is how good the model is at finding legendaries, and specificity is how good the model is at saying a Pokemon is not legendary. To calculate sensitivity, you do true positives, so those that are legendary that were correctly identified as legendary, divided by true positives plus false negatives, which is basically every Pokemon that is actually actually legendary. For specificity, it's the opposite. On top, you have the true negatives, which is all of the Pokemon that are not legendary that were correctly identified from our model as not legendary, divided by the true negatives plus the false positives, which is essentially every single Pokemon that is not legendary. And we get out sensitivity at 0.8 and specificity at 0.983. So in our particular case, our model has good specificity, which means it's really good at telling a non legendary Pokemon that they are indeed not legendary. Now let's talk about another way to test the effectiveness of our model, which is called cross validation. <laughs> this method is the best assessment of your model. Basically, it takes your entire data and divides it into equal parts and then performs multiple test train splits. A seven-fold cross-validation will split your data into seven parts and a 10-fold cross-validation will split your data 
into 10 parts. Now I've been taught, though I haven't looked into this myself, that the tenfold cross validation is actually the most optimal. Here's what this looks like. It breaks your data down into 10 different segments. This is done randomly. Then it will pick each segment to be a testing segment and use the remainder as the training segment. So what it's doing is performing a test train split 10 times. So as you can imagine, this is going to give you back 10 different scores. The goal of this is to catch any selection bias or potential overfitting. To do this in Python, we do from scikit-learn.model selection import cross val score. So you'll notice our model is now CLF2, and I'm taking cross val score, plugging in our model and all of the data of X and all of the data of Y and giving it a cross validation of 10. So you can see we have 10 different scores displayed here returned as an array, and this model is giving us scores of over 90% each time. That seems pretty good. Let's have a little bit of fun. I'm gonna use Digimon and their stats and see if they were a Pokemon, would they be considered legendary or not? Let's use our model to find that out. This Pokemon's name is Anyamon, and its total stats are 1200, with attack, defense, speed, and all of those other things as 200 each. So if we do clf2.predict with these numbers, does our model predict it's legendary? Yes, it returns true, which means Anyamon is a legendary Pokemon. Let's do it again for this Pokemon named Agumon. Its total stats are 240, with speed, attack, special attack, and all the other stats at 40. If we plug that in, let's see what our model says. <gasps> False. That means that Agumon is not a legendary Pokemon. I think we can agree this is a pretty fun model. So there you have it. We have learned the fundamentals of data mining today, including data selection, test train split, model fitting, confusion matrices, and our friend cross validation. If you haven't already, please subscribe and let me know in the comments below any videos that you would like to see. And if you haven't already, please check out this video about Python classes where I teach you how to make your very own Python Pokemon battle game. It's really easy and it's intended for beginners. I think you're gonna enjoy it.